And here is the Writer's Almanac for Saturday, May the 14th, 2022. America's first space station, Skylab, was launched on this date, 1973, Solar Observatory, a microgravity lab, a medical lab, an Earth observation station, launched unmanned, the first crew rendezvoused about 11 days afterward. They spent almost a month in space, the second crew two months, the third crew almost three, studying the effects of space travel on the human body. After so long in space, it took the astronauts a while to adjust to life with gravity. They would often just drop things rather than setting them down because in space they expected them to simply float away. There was a 40th anniversary celebration of Skylab, and one crew member described what it was like to do a spacewalk outside the vehicle. He said, from outside, you can see the entire Earth in a three-dimensional perspective. You're riding along on this magic carpet. There's no vibration, no sound, and a sunrise and sunset every hour and a half. You just want to stay out there. The last crew left in February 1974. Five years later, Skylab fell out of orbit, crashed to Earth, most of it landing in Western Australia. It's the birthday of the nature writer Hal Borland, born in Sterling, Nebraska, 1900, the man who wrote those nature editorials in the New York Times about the changing seasons, especially the coming of spring. There was a New Yorker cartoon about him of a man holding a newspaper and saying, here's another of those crackpot editorials about the voices of frogs shattering the autumn stillness. And it was on this day that Dylan Thomas's radio play Under Milkwood was premiered, 1953, at the Poetry Center at the 92nd Street Y in New York City, a play about a walk through a Welsh village of Laragub, imagining the voices of the people, Polly Garter, Captain Cat, Organ Morgan, Mrs. Willy Nilly, and No Good Boyo. It was the last good thing that Dylan Thomas wrote. He died three months later of alcoholism. It was on this day, 1607, the London Company explorers from England landed in what would become Jamestown, Virginia, the first English settlement in the New World. It was on the banks of the James River, 60 miles from the mouth of Chesapeake Bay. And it was on this day in 1804 that Lewis and Clark set out from St. Louis on their overland expedition to the Pacific coast and back. Meriwether Lewis wrote in his journal, We were now about to penetrate a country at least 2,000 miles in width on which the foot of civilized man had never trodden. I could but esteem this moment of my departure as among the most happy of my life. Here's a poem for today by Linda Paston, The Months. March... When the Earl King came to steal away the child in Goethe's poem, the father said, Don't be afraid, it's just the wind, as if it weren't the wind that blows away the tender fragments of this world. Leftover leaves in the corners of the garden, a Lenten rose that thought it safe to bloom so early. April In the pastel blur of the garden, the cherry and red bud shake rain from their delicate shoulders as petals of pink dogwood wash down the ditches in dreamlike rivers of color. May, may apple, daffodil, hyacinth, lily, and by the front porch steps, every billowing shade of purple and lavender lilac, my mother's favorite flower, sweet breath, drifting through the open windows, perfume of memory, conduit of spring. The Months, a poem by Linda Paston from The Last Uncle, published by W.W. W. Norton and used by permission here on the Writer's Almanac. Be well, do good work, and keep in touch.